Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we are talking about some budget DIY trends that you should stay away from because not every DIY should be DIY'd and is great for every space and every home. We've got some things to talk about, so let's obviously get into the video. The first DIY trend that we love to see, we love to hate to see, is painting furniture. You all know how I feel about this. Like I'm all about like a wood piece of furniture. Just leave it alone, leave it be. There's nothing wrong with a wood piece of furniture, but we have to talk about why this is not a great budget DIY option. And that's because of a number of reasons. One is it usually does not come out so great when you DIY this yourself. Unless you're having this professionally done by a company that actually knows what they're doing and is using quality materials, and I don't just mean expensive chalk paint, then you might not be getting the finish you think you're getting. It might not be the quality you think it is. And I know sometimes you see a piece and you're like, something here needs to change. You're like desperate for things to be different because your eyes are just insulted by what you're seeing. You want to make those changes and painting the furniture can be like that easy, quick thing you think can happen, but you have to be so careful about it because one, you could destroy a really cool vintage antique piece that actually has a lot of value if you don't know what that piece is. So definitely do some homework before you try anything like this, but also you might not be getting the quality you think you are or the finish you think you're going to get. You might regret it if you don't do the prep work, which takes a lot of work. It's not a small job to repaint a piece of furniture. As where a piece of furniture that's wood actually has a lot of character, a lot of detail, and a reference back to nature. And if it's already painted and it's not really worth anything, if it's a flat pack piece of furniture, like go ahead and DIY it, make it over. Nobody really cares. Or if it's like yellow pine that's not rare or valuable, go for it. But save those rare wood pieces of furniture because a lot of that is difficult to replicate. It can't be done today. And it might actually be worth something if it's not been painted over. Let's talk about something else. I hear all of the time, I see it all all of the time and actually in the last couple of days I've seen people having nightmares with it and that is peel and stick. Peel and stick can be a viable option if you're looking to like do a quick little thing or you're looking to resurface something. But the reality is when it comes to peel and stick is that not all of it's made the same, not all of it is actually removable and not all of it that is removable can actually be removed without leaving any residue. So you wanna be very careful about it. And quite frankly, I don't think it's always necessary to completely redo a space with peel and stick. So what I personally would suggest is actually looking at what the original design of that space is. All design is created with good intentions and there are great variants of whatever your space is out there that have been well designed that look really great in their original form. So be sure you're looking for what those are. You take inspiration from what the space is and then layer that into your style. And it can be a good way to upgrade a dated space into looking a little bit more fresh and newer. But just because something is the newest thing doesn't mean it's the greatest thing and that doesn't mean peel and stick is always the right option. It's a temporary solution, but you wanna make sure you're doing it the right way so you don't end up ruining or damaging the surface underneath that peel and stick. Really, really consider what is the design of the space? What is your personal style and how can those layer together before you just decide to cover everything with peel and stick DIY stuff? With that said, you know, I love a budget-friendly option and I think there's great design to be had in every space, which is why if you haven't already, you should definitely take a moment and join the Lachique family by hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell notification. It costs absolutely nothing, but you will get a world of knowledge through these videos I post every week. Be on the lookout for them and join us here. After you've done that, please let me know in the comment section down below so I can personally welcome you to the channel. And hey, while you're at it, Give this video a like. Let's talk about something else I see, a DIY, a budget-friendly option, I see all of the time, but it does not always mean it's the best option and probably shouldn't be the first thing you go to, and that's painting tile. This is something that can be done. You can paint tile, but that doesn't mean it's going to last. It doesn't mean it's gonna be great quality or that it's going to be the best solution. And once again, just like the peel and stick options, it can actually be quite expensive to get the right paint, the right materials and prep to paint tile, and that money might be better served put somewhere else. So, 
when you are looking at a bathroom or a space, a tile floor, or even a shower surround that you don't like, you might be looking at it and saying like, gosh, I really don't like this. It's so dated, but I can't retile it. I can't redo it. I don't have the budget for that. And you might say like, what are my alternative options here? One is like deal with it and decorate around it, which might not be a really great solution. And the other might be to paint it. Well, if you're using epoxy based materials, it can actually have a kind of toxic off gassing that you really want to be careful about. So I don't recommend you just go at it yourself and do this. I've also seen people that are like, oh, we're going to stencil on the tiles and do a pattern on them. That can be really difficult to get right. You often have bleeding and touch ups that have to happen. And if you're just using a normal latex paint, it doesn't have the longevity to stand up to water. That's something a lot of people don't realize that latex, when it gets wet, it can actually swell and then peel. So that's not really something you want to go after doing because you might end up causing a lot of damage to the space that you then have to go back over and actually pay someone to do correctly so it's even more expensive than it was to begin with. With that said, you can certainly have companies come out to reglaze tiles, whether that's in a shower, you can have bathtubs reglazed, you can have your floors done, even if that's in like a kitchen or whatever, you can definitely have that done, but you want to make sure you're using a professional company to do this so that you get the job done right and it's actually very high quality because these are really hard wearing surfaces in your home, especially if you're looking at a shower, a bathroom, the kitchen floors, or the floors by your doors that you're entering your home through, like that gets a lot, a lot of wear. So you want to make sure you have a really good quality job done on those surfaces and going at it DIY and doing it yourself. It might look good for the first little bit of time, but in the long term, it's probably not the best solution. So you want to make sure you're having a very high quality and professional grade job done. They're also going to know what needs to do, and they might also ensure their work. So if it gets a little chip or a little damage, Damage, they'll come back and fix it for you. You also have a resource that if it does get damaged, you can then have it fixed. Definitely be on the lookout for companies that offer this in your area because just painting your tile or like getting garage floor paint and going at it yourself, probably not the best option. And there are plenty of other things you could do. And hey, if you really don't like the floors in your bathroom and you don't want to paint them, maybe you look for a floating vinyl option. That can be really great even in a rental because you lay it down, it's cut to size, it floats there, and then it's easy to remove because it's not permanent. That's something really great and worth considering before you look at stuff like peel and stick tiles or painting your bathroom tiles because it can go so wrong so quickly. Let's talk about another DIY project lots of people love to do in their homes, and that's actually flat pack furniture. People really like to get it because it has a cheap cost up front. And hey, that is a budget option. I definitely respect it. And you're DIYing it. You're putting it together yourself, right? And not everybody is good at that. So it definitely can take a little bit of talent to get that done. Although I've never personally understood that. Like I don't think flat pack furniture is difficult to put together. And I always see people like complaining about it online. And I'm like, this is something that like kids could do. So it's like, I don't, whatever. Anyway, I personally don't recommend flat pack furniture in every situation because it does not really have that high quality feel to it, the longevity of it. Some pieces certainly can last you a very long time if they're properly taken care of, but most flat pack furniture is not designed to last long term because it's a business model. These companies want you returning to keep buying more. So they don't make their products to last and you don't get a long lasting product. You want to be careful about that and DIYing flat pack furniture, like upgrading it, making changes to it. If you already have it, I say go at it, but be careful about buying flat pack furniture just to DIY it. At the end of the day, you might spend $200 on that dresser and then $100 on the wallpaper to cover the front of it or dowels or whatever you're doing when you could have just bought a nice dresser off of a marketplace site or a vintage piece for 50, maybe a hundred bucks. You could have got a really good deal and saved yourself a couple hundred dollars. You ended up spending a lot more on something that looks kind of like a DIY project instead of something that's a really good quality vintage piece. Before you go and you're like, oh, we're on a budget, we're doing DIY, we're doing this, that, what's a cheap option? Really look at what you can get on the vintage market, what you can get resale, because you might actually find something that's really your style and really great quality, or you might just find some really good inspiration. And that's always something you want to be on the lookout for. The next thing we have to talk about, the next DIY budget-friendly option that people love to share online, but I don't know why we're doing this or who came up with it, uh, is epoxy coating granite countertops. 
Granite is not a bad material, and I get that not everybody likes the look of it because it can feel very busy, but marble is not so great that you need to cover your granite and fake the look of marble. It's not that amazing. It's not gonna be that groundbreaking of a difference in your space that you need to take a high quality material like granite, a natural stone, and then cover it in a fake material to get the fake look of marble. It's actually kind of like that marble look quartz. If you don't get a really high grade one, it doesn't really look like marble. And the same thing happens when you're DIYing marble. Not everybody is really that talented enough to fake the look of marble and it ends up looking kind of crazy or a little bit messy. Or even just epoxying over granite countertops in a flat color. Like it doesn't really need to be that way. Like you have something that's really high quality like granite and you can tone everything else down down in the space, whether that's the backsplash, the flooring material, the color of the cabinetry, you can really upgrade those things and make granite look very good. As a matter of fact, granite is actually becoming a little bit more popular now. It was very popular in the early 2000s, and then we've been into marble for the last, you know, like five to seven years, I would say. But then granite is actually gaining a little popularity because now it's looked at as a cheaper option. It's more affordable and more accessible, and it actually is a lot more durable. So don't be afraid of keeping the granite you have in your space because not every granite looks bad. It might just be that you're looking at the current trends. When you have a space that's actually really nicely done, it just is not aligned with those current trends. At some point, the trends are going to shift back. So painting over or epoxying over granite countertops does not really make sense to me. Like, why would you take a beautiful natural material like granite and then go over it with something to fake the look of something else? Like, I just don't personally understand that. I don't think it's a great DIY option. Once again, because it can chip, it can flake off, it can crack. If it's not done properly, it doesn't have the durability that that granite already did have. And it usually doesn't really look like whatever you're trying to fake or replicate. So you want to be very careful about that. And I can completely understand not loving the space you're in and not feeling confident in it and not being like, it's current, it's new, it looks like the latest and greatest. Hey, we might talk about what the current trend is, but that doesn't mean it's like everybody has to have it. It's okay okay to have something that's different, to have something that is a little bit older that we maybe aren't doing today, but that doesn't mean it's anything bad or that there's something wrong with it. As a matter of fact, there are lots of kitchens out there that have granite countertops that still look fantastic and amazing. And a lot of those granite options can actually be really elevated by just the materials or the, even the accessories you're using with them. So be on the lookout for what other people have done with that same material you already have before you even consider a DIY, like epoxying over over granite countertops. The next thing we have to talk about is less of a DIY, more of a budget option that I see and we need to address, and that's fake vintage. I know right now vintage is so in, everybody loves it. We're all like, what's the latest, the newest vintage pieces? This French, is it from the 1930s? Is it Danish? Whatever. We love that. Vintage is so in right now, but be careful about fake vintage. So many places, stores, shops, and even designers want to take advantage of the latest and current trends that are out there, and that is vintage. So they are producing pieces that look like they're vintage even though they aren't. You want to be careful and be on the lookout for these because it is nice to be able to go into a place and see everything you want be like, that's great, that's great, that's great, wonderful. But when you really take the time to curate your space and you're out there, you're looking, you're sourcing, you're mixing old and new, vintage and modern, you get a space that's so much more character filled than just going for like, oh, this is the latest, greatest thing. Oh, look, that's a good deal. It's new. It's here at the store. Let me get it. Like you want to be mindful about what you're getting. So be on the lookout for vintage, fake, vintage, fake antiques, because they are definitely out there. And you can find really cool pieces that are pre-owned that are actually vintage, oftentimes for a lot less, very affordably, and you get a lot of really great authentic character. The next thing we absolutely have to talk about, the DIY budget-friendly thing is painting your hardware. Painting hardware in your house, like door handles and cabinet poles, drawer poles, hinges, all of that. People love to change out their hardware to give their home an update because it can really make a space feel very different and very fresh, very revitalized or rejuvenated. But you wanna be careful about how you do that because a lot of people will say, just take your hardware and paint it. Just take it outside and spray paint it. And that might be an option, it might work, but it doesn't always look the best. And there are certain factors you have to consider 
consider if you're doing this. One of which is the durability, because painting over a very smooth surface often doesn't give you great traction and you end up scratching or scuffing and peeling that paint off. And if it's on hardware that you regularly use, like door handles and cabinetry poles, you're often coming into contact with that and you're wearing it down, you're breaking down that layer. So it often doesn't last that long. In addition to that, if it's not a really, really great paint job, it looks like it was painted and it ends up looking a little sloppy, a little bit like a DIY, and that's never what you want from a DIY. You always want a high quality end product. So in my opinion, before I painted hardware, I would look at replacing it. And I know that's a little more expensive. It's not like the most budget friendly thing, but at the end of the day, you are getting a better quality product. And I definitely recommend that. Well, there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure you share with me in the comment section down below because I want to hear from you. I also want to know what is one budget DIY that you see a bunch of people doing that doesn't really look very good and you want to share with us so that we all know not to do it. Be sure you sound off in the comment section. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure you give this video a like and you hit that subscribe button and join us here. I also know that you know someone that they are undertaking a renovation, a makeover. They love to DIY and you want to share with them that red flag before they get too far in. Be sure you share this video with them because friends help friends. And I, of course, will see you in the next one.